Hi everyone, I'm CC Yamato, and we're here to talk about chapter 74 and 75, the point where Clamp finally remembered that Sakura is the main character and should therefore be the focus of the action. These were actually like real doozies of a chapter. Like they, these were long, especially 74. And it looks like we're probably going to have about two more chapters after these. So we're going to around 77, I think, is going to be the end of the series, which is a weird number to end on, but... That just appears to be how it goes. We know at the end of chapter 75 that there's one more chapter, obviously, because they've announced that there's going to be a chapter in August, or rather in the August issue. No, in, no, in August. It will be in August. Uh, but in all likelihood, there is not going to be a way to resolve the series in one chapter. Two chapters, doable. It was also mentioned to me that apparently, and I did not know this, but... Uh, in Subasa Reservoir Chronicle, the final chapter of the series was actually not released in the magazine that Subasa was releasing in. You actually had to buy the final issue to get the final chapter, which would be very interesting if they do the same thing in Nakayoshi, where like the series will actually go until chapter 77, or or we'll get chapter 76 in uh in, in Nakayoshi, but you'll actually have to buy issue 15. To get the final chapter of the series. That would be very interesting. But I'm also getting ahead of myself. So let's talk about the chapters that we have first. Quick recap. So after the play happened. And Kaito has rewritten reality. So that Akiho is now Sakura's sister. Kaito never existed. Akiho was never born into a family of mages. And we're just having a nice life. Where clear card did not happen. As far as everything is from Sakura's perspective. There are no clear cards. She still has the original Sakura card, so those have been given back to her uh, because I guess Sharon never took them in this timeline. And they're just living normally. Uh, and then Sakura has a vision of Akiho's mother who informs uh, uh, Sakura that, you know, the world has been rewritten and she needs to solve that. Except that was a dream, so Sakura immediately forget it. But it's fine, because in Chapter 73, Sakura finds out that the record card has been sitting in her room, recording everything for the entire series. So she basically gets an abridged version of the clear card story shown to her. So now she is perfectly aware that the reality that she currently knows is not correct. It's been rewritten, and it is time for her to go fix that and so that's where we're going to pick up here in chapter 74 where she is going to call a big meeting uh with all of the relevant characters including notably you'll actually see here uh toya is here uh sakura has actually decided to bring toya into the fold on this so we're actually going to finally get official canon recognition that Toya not only, you know, knows that there's something up with Sakura, but he finally gets to actually know the details. He gets to know, at least Toya is, Toya is here, he gets to be part of the explanation. This is where Sakura explains to the group basically what's going on. And as part of the process of, you know, showing everyone what's going on, we get to pull out, you know, the mascots in front of Toya. I don't remember if they actually... Uh, if they actually transform here. I don't think they do, simply because they would take up a lot of room. We also get Ariel and uh, and Mizuki-sensei all get to be invited. It, 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 we are literally bringing in everyone from the series who is relevant to the plot for this meeting. The only problem, of course, is that ultimately, it actually still doesn't matter. Because what we're going to find out later in this chapter is that Sakura is still basically going to insist that this is for her to deal with, and she's only going to bring one additional bit of help. And you can probably guess who that additional bit of help is going to be. So we're just going to click forward here a little bit. There's a lot of good dialogue that's fun here. We actually, I, I think I probably already skipped over it. It was actually way earlier. Uh, it was, it, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was interesting comment from Toya much earlier. Uh, where can I find it? it? There was a, there was a comment from Toya basically where he admits that he actually was very aware that the world wasn't correct, and that's why he had been staying away from home, because he just doesn't want to deal with it. He like Toya is the ultimate non-interventionist. He just does not want to be part of this. It may have actually been earlier. It may have actually been closer to where I was. Speed this up a bit. So the The thing is, is that 
despite this is kind of a beefy chapter, it's a very expositional chapter where not a lot of action happens, at least not until uh, closer to the end. You get a, you get a bunch of these uh, frames where uh, Kaito has been erased from the frame because he's not part of this history anymore. Now, now we get a little bit closer here. We get Akiho uh, presenting the watch, which, as you can see, the thoroughness of this time erasure like ariel no, does not recognize the watch at all despite having a confrontation he's the reason why that watch is cracked and now we get to the final bits where we get we get the car captor sakura part back in here where tomoyo is getting ready to present sakura with a new costume because of course this is the final thing we're gonna get a sakura costume but for all the people who like Shaoran, you'll be happy to know that actually Shaoran also gets a costume because Shaoran is the other person who is going to go with Sakura on this. Now, we're going to stop here for a second here because I think there was actually some, um, uh, th th there was some discussion in the fan base that they don't like this translation that they went with where they say that like, you know, Aki, Akiho's favorite person in the world. Uh, so Sakura has to bring her favorite person in the world, which I, I don't have the Japanese in front of me. It, typically the Japanese usually uses like most important person or most special person or not necessarily going so far as to say person I love, but you know, it's most important person. And here the translation is a favorite person, which we could actually go look this up real quick. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, uh, well, Taisetsu is, uh, a word that I wish I knew off the top of my head. Uh, it's like, Taisetsu is like, uh, okay, see, that doesn't work. I can't break it down by the kanji either because that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, okay, yeah, it is most important. Tais Taisetsu is the most important person. You know, Ichiban Taisetsu. So, yes, see, the, the Japanese said most important person rather than my favorite person which is a definitely different word and has a very different connotation. Like Taisetsu also means like precious, valuable, dear, cherished, beloved. All stronger words than favorite. So I'm going to side with the fan base who said this translation is bunk, which is really par for the course for Kodansha's quick translations uh, with this series like don't, don't get me wrong I'm not gonna dump on translators translating is hard I am a translator just not for Japanese um it's rough and to do this in an evening basically like or to do this basically overnight or maybe over the course of a couple of days if they get handed the script early look translation is rough it's an art not a science but at the same time, like, the, the translators have notoriously gotten some really big thematic and uh, meaningful mistranslations made throughout the course of the series. And this is just another one of them. So anyway, Sakura says that she's going to only bring her most favorite person, which means that, you know, not even going to take Kiro and Yue with her. And also, she's not going to bring Akiho with her, which I'm going to actually mention again when we get to chapter 75. But uh, yeah, uh, like, no, let's talk about it now. It's, it's interesting that the series has spent so long with Akiho uh, and the climax has to be you would think that the climax would have involved having Akiho involved with trying to bring Kaito back because Kaito is important to her. But it looks like, at least as it's written right now, they're sidelining Akiho. Like, in the name of making Cardcaptor Sakura feature Sakura as the main person to fix it, they're actually getting rid of the person who, honestly, from a narrative perspective, should be the person to get through to Kaito. So, oh, and here it is, by the way. Here's the thing I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is Toya explaining that he knew that something was wrong, even if he wasn't able to tell exactly what it was or understand it. Uh, so he just was staying away from home uh, to you know, give her space to work it out. Because, again, Toya is the ultimate non-interventionist. <laughs> oh, Toya. No one hurts your family and gets away with it. Which is hilarious, because you don't do anything throughout the series, like, at all. Unless he's going to pop up at the end and, like, sock Kaito in the face. That'd be great. But I don't think it's going to happen. It's just not that kind of series. And now we get uh, shots of the final costumes. So Sakura gets this uh, nice-looking costume here. I, I love the, 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 the shoulder cape. I don't know if that has a proper name, but... It's good. It's a little asymmetrical for my taste with the boots, but that just seems to be kind of a 
theme uh, throughout the series. And I actually think I understand what the theming is because you can look on her boots. She has what appears to be clock hands on, on, on the boots. So it's basically like hour hand, minute hand uh, sort of distinction like that that's where the asymmetry comes from it's it's very clock based uh and that that's just that's just where it comes from which is fitting considering that this is kaito and now we get the far more aesthetically pleasing and symmetrical shaoran who has his cape on the other side so it's very complimentary to sakura's side but you know he's got full-length pants boots that are the same height the only other thing that's asymmetrical about him is that his jacket has this robe piece that's coming off of one side, but not the other side. So again, weird asymmetry, but like his is way more symmetrical and I'm all over it. And that's the end of that chapter. Like I said, it's very much a expositional chapter. We'll get a little more into the weeds here as we talk about chapter 75 here we go all right so chapter 75 we actually get a nice cover art that shows a quote-unquote full color version of the costume that she was just wearing even though it appears that it is entirely black and white easy on the inking i suppose uh i want to comment on a couple of extra details here uh the headpiece here is nice and we're actually going to find out that this headpiece which is maintaining that clock motif of like uh minute hand hour hand is also that's apparently like a walkie talkie so she can continue to be in communication with Tomoyo, which is very forward thinking of Tomoyo, given that she's missed so much of clear card by just not being around. Tomoyo has basically built cameras into these costumes. I think she actually says that uh, within a f couple of pages here. Yeah, right, he right here, I believe uh, is, is where she says it. Yeah, there it is. The ear cuffs double as transmitter. So yeah, Tomoyo is covering her bases here uh, and making sure that I am not missing this. I'm going to get one thing recorded in all of Clear Card because yeah, poor Tomoyo. She's um, like many people in Clear Card. She kind of got sidelined, even though her presence is still felt throughout the series. She's still making clothes for Sakura and she is still trying to videotape the moments. It's just the circumstances have been working against her for a lot of the series. Now, let's go back, actually, because I got too deep in the weeds talking about Tomoyo. Uh, let's talk about some other exposition that is given here. So, apparently, this is the first time in this reality where, uh, they, where anyone has seen the Dream Staff. Because, again, remember that in this reality, Clear Card never happened, quote-unquote. They don't remember Clear Card happening, but obviously, Clear Card did happen. Like... We're going to actually find out in this chapter, basically, that the limits of the the Clockland book are a far tighter than we gave them credit for. Like, Clockland really didn't have the ability to rewrite reality. All it did was rewrite their memories, which we kind of understood that that was the case. But Clear Card basically could, like, the, the Clockland book basically couldn't erase most of the evidence of clear card either and we see that in the sense that down here in this bottom panel we see that sakura actually has two keys she has the original star key which was put in that box way way back at the beginning of chapter one where she put the star key away thinking that she was done with magic and then uh, a chapter later she was given the dream key now we finally finally have confirmation that these are in fact two keys it was not a case where the star key became the dream key they have always been two we were pretty sure by this point that there were two keys but to be honest the series had not acknowledged it for the longest time whether or not sakura still had the original star key but there it is we finally got that confirmation and now as i said we're also getting confirmation that the clockland books rewriting of reality was really not that thorough so let's skip ahead back here and i think we're gonna go ahead and just okay so the next the next bit of action here is that sakura is going to give shaoran a pair of wings because you know they have to get places in a hurry you'll notice by the way down here this is the first time that sakura's magic circle has appeared in quite some time i think ever in clear card this is the first time that it's shown up this is like fly is back to its original uh sakura design though Interestingly enough, it doesn't have her name written on it, as opposed to the 
the temporary look that it took when it was in Shaoran's possession, where I believe it had two moons on each side, uh, because uh, because Shaoran is moon aligned, whereas Sakura has both, so she gets a sun and a moon. Uh, uh, like his version of fly was a little different, uh, but yeah, she's giving fly to Shaoran, and there's a reason for that. It's because Sakura remembers, or she's able to call upon flight, a clear card that honestly we believed was one of the cards that was lost in the Clockland book, and I actually had to go back. And look for this. You'll remember when I was talking about the adventure in the Clockland book, we were actually going through Clockland and counting up all of the clear cards that were showing up in the action. I, I had to go back and really look for Flight, which does appear at the end of Chapter 68 because Shaoran uses the Mirror card to give flight wings to both Sakura and Akiho. So it is actually kind of unclear in this moment whether or not uh, the actual flight card was ever in the Clockland book. However, I'm going to assume that it was because I don't think Mirror can replicate things necessarily that aren't nearby. So I think the flight was in the Clockland book, but somehow now here it is, it's outside the book. And this is, like I said, this is complicated because basically there were, according to Momo, there were cards that were kept away from the final confrontation in preparation for this actual final confrontation. Record was one of them. Record was sitting, hiding in Sakura's room, waiting for the moment that it would be called upon. Flight, on the other hand, if I remember correctly, Flight was in the Clockland book, yet somehow now it is free out here to be used uh, by Flight or, or by Sakura. So... It's, it's interesting. I'm not going to go so far as to say that it's an error because honestly, you know, Clamp deserves a lot more credit than I've honestly given them throughout the series. And I, I accept that I have been unduly harsh. Like, it's not like Clamp are doing this. It's not like Clamp are making this up as they go along. There is a plan. They've shown some incredible foresight in some of the things that they have uh, laid out. So it, it, again, it's a, it's a it's a detail that I'm clearly missing, uh, and maybe it'll be easier once I have access to the Tonko Bonds because unfortunately the online sources uh, for chapters between 69 and 72 uh, have kind of dried up. So it's, it's harder for me to refer back to those at least until the print issues are actually out. So anyway, now Sakura and Xiaoran both have a set of wings. It's time for them to take off to, uh, to participate in the final confrontation. Now, it, it sounded initially like they were going to have to go around collecting up a bunch of the clear cards that would be used. But that's probably not going to be the case, A, because most of the clear cards are probably not useful in this situation. And also it's stated explicitly by Momo that only some of the clear cards are around so that's not something that uh th that's not something that's not where the story is going mostly because there's just not enough time we know that the series is coming to a close we know that the final issue is due in october there's not enough time for like an entire second micro card capture adventure where they have to go and recover all of the clear cards so there's only going to be a few of them and also, we know that the clear cards aren't going to factor in because, as we just saw, Sakura used uh, Fly, but later in this chapter, she's going to use Sword, the original Sword, not Blade. She's going to use Sword. So Sakura has access to all of her original Sakura cards again. Uh, and and so, like, the clear cards are not going to... Uh, the, the clear cards are not going to be the linchpin for finishing this. She's going to have access to her original powers uh, to do this final confrontation. <laughs> We get a sweet moment with Toya and Akiho. It's like, Toya knows she's not his sister, but it doesn't matter. Toya's just a good guy. All right, so skipping over a little bit of exposition here, we're going to focus on the fact that uh, Sakura now has pulled out the watch because the watch is going to be integral to them uh, figuring out what they need to do next. They know that the watch has power uh, and they are rightfully of the assumption that the power inside the watch is tied to the person that they are looking for, i.e. Kaito. So... She hands the watch over to Shaoran, and Shaoran gets his one single, you know, cool guy moment as he uses the Rashinban uh, for the first practical use in clear card, I believe. I don't, I'm not sure he's gotten to use it at all. We, we've seen that the we've seen the Rashinban has been the home of the clear cards while Shaoran was in possession of them. 
Uh, but this is the first time he's using it to actually search for something with it, which is, you know, its main purpose. It shoots a beam toward the moon, which is pretty quickly devised that the moon is not actually the moon. And so Sakura does the completely reasonable thing of cutting the moon in half because surprise, obviously that's not the moon. Look, it's entirely flat because we find out that they have not, not only, not only did the Clockland book not rewrite reality, it's it like the, the memory rewrite wasn't even good enough for Kaito to trust it. He basically either, either he did, or it's part of the Clockland book or whatever. It's basically put them in this little bubble reality for them to live in. And it's a bubble reality that's big enough that even Ariel and Mizuki, who are, remember, on the other side of the planet in England are also involved or at least partially immersed in this different reality. So yeah, we, we, I, yeah, I don't know exactly how else to explain it because we don't get a whole lot of extra detail. The point is, is that as far as I can understand with how this is, uh, Kaito rewrote all their memories and then put them in a bubble. They put them in, in their own reality, uh, safe from everything else. And I just wanted to pause here, by the way, because Sakura, this was another thing that was pointed out. Sakura is wielding the original Klo version of the sword card here, rather than, which which was a rapier uh, or a saber that you can see that had this guard here. The, I believe when Sakura used the, uh, the sword card as a star card, as a, as a Sakura card, uh, she didn't have, it, like, it didn't have that guard like that. Because that's, that's like I said, that's how it appears. That's how it appears on the card uh, with that cross guard or with, with that uh, with that handle. And it's also uh, how it appeared when she used it as a sword card. But when she, when she used it, uh, when she used it against the giant teddy bear, I believe it had a different form. That's its base form. Nope, that's just, the, nope, all it's showing me is its original form. Look, point is, I will I will look for a proper uh, shot later. But yeah, it, it closely resembles the Clo version of the sword. Either way, just a cool shot. Really excellent. I've, I've liked uh, that throughout this chapter, Sakura is taking things seriously and is given the, uh, has it, has been given the moments that she has deserved in a series that, you know, bears her name. I didn't comment it. I didn't comment on it earlier, uh, but I believe it's like, yeah, like it, the feisty Sakura here, like she is ready to handle business uh, and finally put an end to all of this Kaito nonsense. So let's see, let's catch up here to where we were because here's where things get a little more trippy. I mean, we already cut the moon in half, but you know, we, we can continue to go deeper into the weirdness as we pass by the fake moon and into this clock world. <clears throat> now this is, now by the way, that's not your monitor blurring. It's just like that. It's, it's it, the, all of this weird image compression. This is just part of it. You can see how much how how nice and clean the lines are around them but over here all of this that's on purpose so they're here in a weird clock void it kind of gives you the impression uh, it kind of feeds more into my view that again kaito or the clockland book something put them into a little pocket reality rather than actually changed the physical world around them because I don't think the Clockland book has that ability. Just look, it's it's not a it's not a knock on the Clockland book. Changing reality is really really hard, especially on a huge scale like this. Like it's just not really doable. I know it's magic and you're applying arbitrary rules to magic, but it's just that look, that's really hard, okay? It's a lot easier to just put people in a tiny little reality bubble and rewrite that rather than try and rewrite all of space and time. It's just, that's just how it is. And that appears to be what the Clockland book did. And now we get to the final uh, couple frames of the page here. And we're going to see, you know, what we've been building to this entire time as we find the dragon in a little bubble. And, or maybe that's a flat surface. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, it's, it's, it's 2D. 
I can't tell if that's supposed to be like a sphere and the dragon is curled up in it, or it's a dragon like flatly pressed against a clock like seal. It's really hard to tell, but this is what we've been building to. The, the watch has led them to this, which we believe that this is supposed to represent Kaito based on the fact that like, so whenever Kaito had backstories, read to us the this silhouette was always uh drawn along the pages so the the dragon is either associated with kaito or the dragon is kaito which is weird but okay i'm i'm i dig it i'm fine with it i've been wanting someone else on team akiho to transform into something else like momo turns into a woman and keeping the trio-ness like Either Akiho or Kaito had to turn into something else. So here we go. Kaito turns into a dragon. So this is the final shot of this chapter and where we are going to be left hanging until August 1st where the next chapter comes out. Okay, so final thoughts on these last two chapters. Like I said, this has been an excellent time to finally see Sakura take charge of the series and actually do something proactive. It's been a common complaint I've had throughout all of Clear Card that it feels like Osakura has been entirely too reactionary, uh, has not guided the action of the series at all. It it has been a treat, especially in this chapter, to see Sakura wielding her original cards as she goes out to clean up Kaito's mess. A mess that he just did not have to make. There were so many other ways to do this. Like, like I know this isn't that kind of series, but if Kaito's whole thing was that he needed to just give Akiho a a better life and keep her away from the Squid Clan, I, I don't know. I feel like just murdering the entire Squid Clan would have actually been easier than the entire plot of Clear Card. Like, Kaito is a really powerful magician. I feel like him killing a few dozen magicians would just be easier. We've already seen that at the very least, Kaito can fend off like attacks from the entire Squid Clan throwing lightning at him. He did that way back in like chapter uh, the 40s or so when um, during the rewind chapter where Kaito was outside his, uh, his home and he had to stop a bunch of lightning arrows because the Squid Clan is trying to kill him. I just feel like maybe Kaito could have just killed all of them, and then it would have been fine. It's, again, it's not that kind of series, but I think a small amount of murder might have actually been an easier solution than what we went with. But anyway, that's a breakdown of what's happened in the chapters uh, in the last two months. And then... I yeah, we'll come back and we'll talk about chapter 76 because that's probably going to be a lot of stuff going on. And then we'll probably come back and talk about what should be chapter 77 and the final chapter. Like I said at the beginning, I really didn't expect to be... In 2016, I really didn't expect to be doing this seven years later. It's been quite a ride. And I'm really... I, I've wanted the series to end for a long time. I felt that it needed to end for a long time and I'm glad it, it finally is. Although, let's just remember that the anime is coming back. So even with the manga over, the ride will not be done, but it's going to give me a chance to reevaluate my life. It feels unreal when a series that has gone on for this long ends, especially a series that I did not expect to go on this long, because Clamp doesn't typically write series that run for the length of one story arc of a shonen series. Like, so, like most of Clamp's stories, most of their manga lasted for like three or four years at most. And then they go on to something else. It's kind of why I like Clamp. They do a lot of variety. As opposed to locking yourself into one shonen manga for 20 years. So when when Sakura Clear Card has now gone on seven years, it was a big surprise. Um, it, it was it was a huge surprise. The, the anime will follow the manga. That's probably why the anime went on hold. Is to make sure that the manga finished so that the anime would be faithful to it. Which makes a lot of sense considering how the Cardcaptor Sakura anime works. The original Cardcaptor Sakura anime was written by Clamp. Uh, Nanase Okawa is the, uh, is the screenplay writer for most of the episodes 
of the original card character Sakura. So while they were working on the manga, they were also working on the anime. And that's why the anime translates so well from the manga, even though the anime by the strictest definition is mostly filler because it's mostly stuff that didn't happen in the manga. But that's, that's why the manga and the anime for Card Catcher Sakura are two separate, but that's a bad way to say it, are, are two different, but perfectly valid canons of the same series. Uh, because again, they were both written by Clamp and presumably Clamp will be heavily involved in the writing of the clear card anime. Although they don't have 100% control of it. You'll remember that the clear card anime changed what uh, Nadashiko's pendant was. In the manga, it's a clock. Whereas in the anime, it got turned into a key for some reason. Uh, we won't know the reason for that until the season two, quote unquote, of clear card returns. But presumably Clamp will return to help write it. Morio Asuka, the director, will, you know, come back to direct it. Uh, we don't know who the animation director is. It was uh, Kunihiko, uh, I'm going to mess his name up. I'll just put it here. It's it's Kunihiko Hosada, Kisada. Again, I'll just put it up. Uh, he was the animation director for Clear Card. Uh, presumably he'll come back. Unpopular opinion, I don't really care for the animation direction that some of Clear Card went in. So I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be hurt if they went with a different guy, but I mean, they're going to make sure that the, the animation appearance looks the same regardless. It doesn't matter who the director is going to be. Anyway, that's all I have to say about chapter 74, 75. Thanks everyone for showing up and I'll see everyone for chapter 76.